We left our church and our position as ministers due to the ongoing spiritual abuse, religious abuse, emotional abuse that my parents and brother had started and that others had joined in on. And even in spite of this, we didn't go no contact with my parents at this point. It had been three over three years of abusive behavior. And really, as I started doing the work, going to counseling, reading old journals from my childhood, I recognized my parents had actually been neglectful toward me for most of my life. And you can see that in some of the other videos I've put up and that they had also been supporting my brother who has been an abusive, manipulative person as long as ever I can remember. So, you know, I was doing the work and recognizing all this, but even with all of that, we still hadn't gone no contact with my parents, mostly because we kept hoping that as we made stronger and stronger boundaries, that it would shake them out of their denial and determination to be right. And so we allowed them to stay in touch with the children. I didn't feel a need to be in touch with them, but I allowed my husband, you know, my husband was happy to navigate arranging occasional visits with my parents for the kids. And we allowed them to make phone calls to our kids, to send them birthday gifts, whatever, but we didn't, and I think we went and saw them. He took them to go see my parents. My, he took my kids to go see their grandparents once, whichever kids wanted to go. At that point, some of my kids didn't want to go because they saw the abuse and weren't interested in being a part of it anymore. So that went on for another couple of months. And during that time, our church that we had left sent out a letter in response to our resignation letter, which we never got a copy of. They sent out to all the churches. Um, just like the letter of resignation we sent, although we sent our resignation letter to the home church too, not just to not just to everybody else. But we never got a copy of that letter. We heard about it third hand a month later from a, somebody at a different one of our location churches. And so we got all of this letter and basically the letter was talking about what we had said and was trying to play it like we didn't, like it was a family issue that wasn't a big deal and we had made it a big deal. Also, I heard from several people that when people asked my parents what had happened to us, my dad directly stated, I don't know, which was totally bogus. I have written proof that I emailed and texted and talked about it multiple times. So that was what we were dealing with. I suggested that my parents go and get counseling because I had tried to communicate with them about our family issues and it wasn't getting better. It was just continuing to get worse and they were gathering people on their side and they were just, it just kept getting worse. And you can watch the other 20 plus videos on the subject if you really want to hear the full story. But the long and short of it is, I finally said, you know, I've gotten, I've, I've gone and gotten help and counsel to try to work through my side of things. And those tools are available to you too. And I would strongly suggest that maybe we can go to family counseling or something and we can go and take care of that. And, you know, it took them a while to respond. And then they said, oh yes, we'd like to go to family counseling. And we think we should go to cognitive behavioral therapy to go and get counseling together. But you see, <laughs> the whole problem with this is that when they agreed to go to counseling, I already knew that my dad had been lying directly about the fact, that, saying to other people from our church denomination that he didn't know what the problem was with my husband and I and our family, that he didn't know anything about the situation, and that he was shocked that we had left also. Well, the shock part was probably true, because the trouble is when you're communicating with an abusive person, they hear what they want to hear. And so I can believe they were shocked. But he most certainly was not ignorant of why. I had it, not only had I communicated it several times in conversation, but I have, I, and I've kept them even till now in case I ever need to prove it in court for a restraining order. But I kept every piece of written communication I made with them, every text message, every email as we were sorting through this process because I needed to be sure for myself that I had communicated it clearly. And I had all the evidence. And so them being willing to go to counseling was just a crock because if you can't even tell the truth about things or at least admit that you know what's going on, like he didn't have to say he didn't know anything. He could say, I'm not at liberty to talk about it or something like that. That's a very different statement to make. But no, he was just telling people he had no idea and you know, spinning it whichever way he wanted. Well, why would you put yourself in counseling with someone like that? That's just, no, if they can't be truthful, there's no chance that counseling is actually gonna work. So we didn't end up doing that, but it was something we considered until we saw that that was not gonna be something that was gonna work for sorting things out with my parents. What finally drove us to start being no contact with my parents was actually their interactions with our kids. Um, we allowed my parents to stay in contact with our kids um, and even made an appointment to visit, to take the kids to visit them, although I couldn't handle that because of my own CPTSD issues and my parents just were triggering me all the time. But we did allow them to stay in contact with our kids because we didn't want to cut our kids off from their grandparents or the other way around. But what we noticed over a few months after we left the church and as we were allowing this contact to continue was that my parents and my brother 
we're continuing to use their relationship with our kids to obtain information about Brian and I. They would have conversations over um, messenger kids or over the phone with our kids and spend more time asking our kids about what Brian and I were doing and what our family's plans were and things like that. And hardly any time actually talking to the kids themselves. And then my mom, she had been using me as an emotional dumping ground for years. I actually functioned as her therapist um, in many ways. Um, and she would tell me all the hard, difficult things she was dealing with in her marriage, and the challenges she had with my siblings, and all of these things. And I've come to recognize that that's what it was. I was actually functioning as her therapist. Um, and so I cut that off, but she was starting to do similar things with my kids, with two of my girls. And she was using manipulative language with them. She was putting them on guilt trips for not being able to see them as often as she would like and trying to persuade them to tell us that they should come hang out with us again. And they were basically using their relationship with our kids to try to find power over us. And my daughters, who were who are the oldest of the six, we have three, three daughters and they're the oldest of our six kids. And my daughters, the oldest wouldn't even stay in touch with grandma and grandpa anymore. She could just see through it and was done with it. And the other two tried to stay in contact, but they started to see that my mom and my dad were being manipulative in their relationship with our kids. And so we directly told them, you cannot treat our kids like adults and you cannot use your relationship with them to get what you want. That is not okay. We were very direct with them and they continued to do it. And so when we saw that they were, and our kids could tell, like they weren't even, it was obvious to our girls. And so finally we set the boundary and said, do not contact us anymore. And even that they couldn't respect. Contact continued after that. But that's why we finally have to set it, because they weren't treating our kids like kids, they were treating them like adults. So we finally told my parents and my brother and his wife, by default, not because she was really involved in the process, she was recovering from a concussion, but uh, when people are married, <laughs> one, you can't tell how much of what they're doing is being influenced by the abusive person. And so we told my parents and my brother and sister-in-law, do not contact us. And they couldn't manage that. And so at Thanksgiving 2021, we were having a family Thanksgiving and just kind of enjoying having it just be us and the kids. And, um, you know, it was hard because my husband had, had to find a job very quickly after we left the ministry and it wasn't an ideal job by any means, but he needed to have, we needed to have income coming in while we're building the business that you're <laughs> enjoying at the moment. Um, this business of building a community for families through blog and through, um, you know, TikTok and YouTube and other things. But I was building this business, my husband was working and so we were enjoying our Thanksgiving day and my parents texted us, happy Thanksgiving, we miss you all texted our kids that on their phones, on their devices. My brother, same thing. Happy Thanksgiving, we miss you. We wish we were together. Bogus nonsense, right? If they wish we were together, they actually would have made an effort. But no, this was just trying to trigger us, trying to guilt trip us. And so my husband said, if you contact us again, we will be contacting the police. And so we didn't hear anything from them for a while, but we also knew that that wasn't probably going to be the end of it. And so around Christmas, we got ourselves new phones and new phone numbers. and. We told none of our relatives, but it also meant that no one from our old church could contact us unless they were a safe person who had proved themselves to us. And so we had to take drastic measures. And even then, due to some complications with the phone system, I got my new phone first and then my husband got his a few weeks later, but my brother and my parents tried to text me for my birthday in January and it didn't come through because I'd already blocked them and had a new number. <laughs> um, but it came through to my husband's phone and he just deleted it. <laughs> but it's really interesting when people realize that they're losing control and can't manipulate you anymore. They just get really clingy. Instead of being willing to abide by the boundaries and show that they're a respectful person, they just freak out. Why are there so many toxic people in my life? That's this question you start asking yourself when you start realizing that you're having to remove yourself from interactions, go no contact with your parents, your in-laws, extended family and such, when you start getting going on this cycle, and you start having to limit people's access to you and you realize how many toxic people are around you, one of the thoughts that comes into your head is, is it me? Am I the abusive person and are they all normal? But I want to give you an alternate explanation for this because it's the one that I've settled on. And what it is, is that until you start to do your own healing work, you will find yourself regularly repeating relationships where you are being taken advantage of, where you are being abused, and it is not your fault. And I'm not saying there's any way to blame those who are survivors, but because it's familiar and our brains are trained to look for safety and familiarity, we tend to find ourselves in these abusive relationships because we've learned how to navigate them and it's familiar to our brains. So again, I'm not saying this to victim blame or to shame anyone. 
But sometimes you start to feel like you're crazy when you have to cut off contact with so many people because you've lived with abusive relationships your whole life, especially if you were raised by someone who's abusive. And so, of course, until you start to heal that in yourself, you're going to find yourself drawn to those relationships because you haven't recognized that they're abusive maybe when you start them. And so it's not your fault if you suddenly find that there's a lot of people you have to stop allowing them to have access to you because you've grown and you now recognize that they're abusive. So if you are feeling like there's something wrong with you, just know that is not the case. Your brain tries to protect you the best way it can, and one of the ways it does that is by putting you in situations that it feels are familiar and that it recognizes.